Hi, I'm glad you could join me. Sort of caught me today. I thought today we'd do something a little bit different. And I've got the old standard 18 by 24 inch canvas up here. But today I'm going to start out and I'm going to cover the entire canvas with just a nice thin even coat of liquid clear with the tiniest little touch of Indian yellow in it. That's liquid clear and Indian yellow. So I'll tell you what, let's have them graphically run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. And while they're doing that, I'll finish this up. Now when you're using this liquid clear, probably the first thing to remember is use a very small amount. It goes a long way. And I'm just mixing the tiniest little amount of Indian yellow into it. And Indian yellow is very transparent. It's a very nice, nice yellow, bright, shiny. Okay. And I just want to finish covering the canvas with it here. Just like so. And scrub it in. Just really, really make that old brush work for you. Scrub it in and use long horizontal and vertical strokes just to assure that it's even all the way across the canvas. There we go. It only takes a second when you're using a big old brush to cover your canvas. Today, today I thought we'd do a beautiful little painting and show you how you can use this liquid clear and a transparent color to do a fantastic effect. And when you're doing this at home, try any one of the transparent colors using the same idea and you'll be amazed. You're absolutely amazed at some of the effects that you can achieve. Let me wash the brush and then we can get started. We wash our brushes, as you know, in odorless thinner. Oop, oop, there you go. Shake off the excess and just take out all your frustrations. Now then, today, today we're going to use a limited palette. That means very few colors on it. I'm going to start with some dark sienna, a little dark sienna and the least little touch of Van Dyke Brown. Just sort of mix them together on the brush, like so. Do a nice warm little winter scene, I think, today. That's that's always fun. Okay, let's go right up here. Now, let's do some little things up in the sky. Like so, just wherever you want them. We're gonna make some little, some little patterns. Let me show you another thing. Just thought of something else that, that you'd really like. Maybe, maybe you wanna put a bright spot in the sky. Watch here, watch here, watch here. There's so many things you can do with this. I'll take just some titanium white and let's go. Maybe you want a little bright spot right in here. Shoot. You can uh, try this with a like phthalo blue or Prussian blue, very transparent. And you can make beautiful, beautiful skies. And then you can put an indication of sunlight up in here. See, and this is an opaque color. Look at that. See, that just, it sparkles. It's almost, it's almost so bright it'll hurt your eyes. And then we can take this color and bring it down here and there. See there? Look at that. This is one of the most exciting paintings of the series. I'm really crazy about the effects that you can achieve with this. There. And it works very rapidly. It only takes a second because the yellow here will be your base color. And all we're going to use today is nice warm earth tones of browns and yellows. So you just sort of decide where you think these little things should be and drop them in. Just little streakies in the sky. There's maybe one there. Wherever, wherever. Now, further away, if this is going to be a light area, the further away you get from it, the darker. So add a little more Van Dyke Brown in the areas that are far away. And that'll make that look even brighter. You need dark in order to show light. So the further away it is, the darker it is. Something like so. Okay, we can wash your brush. Just scrub him off. Here's the screen in the bottom of this bucket. It stands about an inch high or so. And that allows the that allows the solid materials to settle to the bottom and it keeps your paint thinner relatively clean. Okay, now with a clean, dry brush, be sure your brush is dry. Be sure it's dry. Watch here. Now then, just follow the angles that you want your sky to have. 
and you can blend the sky right on out. Just like that. See there? That easy. You have a beautiful, beautiful little sky. Very, very effective. And as I say, try this in, in any of the transparent colors. You'll love what happens. Back into my browns. I'm using both browns here, the Van Dyke and Dark Sienna. Just tap the brush into it. Just tap it. Okay. Maybe there's a little foothill back here. Little. Just take the corner of the brush, touch it, pull down. Little footy hill. And he lives, he lives right there. Just touch, give him a little downward pull. Just snap the bristles. Just snap them. And I want this to be almost the same color as the sky because it's far away. Far, far away. Now with a clean dry brush, I have several brushes going here so I don't have to spend all my time washing. I'm gonna tap just the base of it. Just tap it. Give it a little upward pull. That'll soften it. There. Now let's get out a fan brush. I like, I like fan brushes, so let's play with fan brushes today. We'll go into our browns, both of them, Dark Sienna and Van Dyke, like so. Load the brush quite full of paint. Okay, let's go in here and touch, give it a little upward push. See? Just touch, push, upward. You see there? There you go. See, that makes all them little grassy things on the top. Now, if you go straight in, chances are you're going to get smiley faces or smiley frowns depending on which way it bends. Use the side of the brush. Use the corner of it. There we go. And we can drop in all kinds of little things there. Wherever you want them. Wherever you want them. And we'll pull a little bit of that down. With that we'll create the illusion of reflections in a minute. All we're doing here is just applying a little bit of the color to the canvas. The liquid clear makes the canvas wet and it's slick. It's just like when you have liquid white on the canvas, only it's clear. And maybe back in there, there lives a little evergreen. Now, sort of make a center line by just touching and then take and give it little upward pushes. See, this will make the branches just bounce upward. See there? Isn't that a super way to make a little tree? Cute little tree, let's give him a friend. Give him some friends. And you can put as many or as few of these in your painting as you want. Just drop them in. Just wherever, maybe maybe over here too. We don't want this side to get lonely. There's one. There's another one right there. Just have to make a decision. And a lot of times, it's better not to pre-plan your painting. When, you, when you're learning how to do this, just start off with a canvas and have a general idea in your mind, the time of day, the time of year, and just go with it. Go with it, let things happen. And it, it, teaches, you, it teaches you how to create on canvas and how to compose. I used to teach classes where I would take and have people just hit the canvas with a big gob of color, and from that, they had to turn it into a beautiful painting. That was the project for that day. It may be one of the best learning experiences that we have ever taught. Let me just put a few little bushy things here and there, wherever you want them, see there? Just pop them in. Make it look like little bushes and trees that are far away. Okay, a little touch of paint thinner. And I'll go right into that same color. Just turn the brush, brings it to a point. And maybe back in here, we have a few little trees and sticks and stuff that live out here. Just sort of decide where you think they should be and drop in a few. Just sort of breaks it up. Breaks it up. Let all these little things happen. You always have little dead trees and sticks in nature. So don't be afraid to put some of them in. Okay. Now then. Let me wash my brush here. Give him a good scrub. Shake it off. <laughs> there you go. All right. Now then, let's 
Let's turn this into reflections. Take it and pull straight down. Grab it, pull straight down. Be sure your brush is as dry as you can possibly get it because liquid clear and paint thinner have violent reactions. So get it as dry as possible. If you don't have enough color, add a little touch. You can add a little touch. Look at there. See, pull down all those beautiful reflections, still using the same brown. There, it takes very little paint. Very little paint. Okay. Beat off the excess and very lightly go across. Very lightly. And we have instant reflections. Now then, take another fan brush here. I have several fan brushes going so I don't have to spend all my time just washing brushes as I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna load this full of titanium white. Really load it full of paint. Okay. Now then, let's begin making. We said we was gonna have a little winter scene. Let's take this and pull it. Allow it to pick up some of that brown. And begin making all kinds of little snow banks way back here. Angles are very important when you're doing this. Pay close attention to your angles. Close, close attention to your angles. And maybe, maybe there's something that goes on back here. There. Whatever. Comes back. Maybe I'll leave a little opening there so it looks like it goes back in. See, this is a little one of the things that we call happy accidents. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Okay, there we go. Now then, just very lightly you can smooth that out. There. Now then, let's take the knife, a little touch of the liquid white. Just pull it out very flat and cut across. Okay, let's do that again so you can see. People seem to have a lot of problems. Pull it out flat as you can get it and cut across. That's all there is to it. Then you go right up here and you cut, push very firmly right into the fabric. Just give it a little push and we can put a nice little edge here. There we go. And this sort of cleans everything up and brings it all together. There's a few little little things out in here, wherever you want them, wherever. There we go. There. Isn't that super? This liquid clear may be one of the neatest things that I've ever designed. I really, really am happy with it. Tell you what, let's do. Let's put a tiny little cabin that lives way back here. I'll use the small knife for that. Pull the paint out, get that little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. See? Okay, let's decide where the roof is at. Touch it and pull. This is going to be just a small little cabin. He lives wee, wee back here. A little bit on the other side. There. I'm going to firm that up. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Now then we can take some brown, a little bit of brown, just go in here and put some sides in front on him, that easy. And take some white, a little bit of the dark sienna, just mix it together, get a little, little bit of paint, and we can come right in here and just put in a few little boards and sticks here and there. This cabin's far away, so you're not going to see a lot of detail. Now then, take our knife. Drop him down to however you want him. <laughs> and just zip him right off. Put a little snow right there. And take, take the small edge of the knife, put in a little doorway. Now he's got a way to get in and out of there. All right. Tell you what, let's do. Let's, let's have some fun. I'm going to take the two inch brush and go right in to the two browns, right into them. Dark sienna and Van Dyke brown. Just mix them right on the brush. Now then, I'm gonna have some nice trees that live right in here. So here, all I'm doing is just pushing on some color. 
Just push it on. You have to make a big decision of where you want this. There. Ooh. There's a lot of paint there. Just really, really putting it on. Create all these little, little bushes and trees and whatever it is that you want in here. Just throw it in. And we know there's going to be some reflections down here, so we can put a little color down into this. Okay. Now then, don't want this side to be left out, so we'll put a few over here too. Just drop them in. Let's see how quick you can drop these in. This old big brush will do fantastic things for you. Make friends with it. Should be a good buddy. some of that down. And anything we don't like in these reflections here, we just cover them up. No big deal. Okay. Now then with our clean brush, very lightly, we just go across. See already that looks like reflections and you've done very, very little. Okay. Once again to my fan brush, right into the two browns. Load that brush full of paint, really full of paint. Let's make, a, let's make an evergreen that lives right here. This will give you a lot of practice with these evergreens. So you can, if it helps, make the entire trunk. Sometimes that helps if it just gives you a guide. Take the corner of the brush and just give it a little upward push, just the corner of the brush. As you work down that evergreen, add more and more pressure. And they're not perfect. Remember that these things grow different. There's all different kinds. Some of them, maybe they got stepped on when they were little and they get, they're crooked, they, they hurt. They're like people. They're all different shapes, all different personalities. Don't try to make every tree in your painting perfect. It'll bother you. Let's have one over this side. Okay, we're gonna make the whole trunk. There it is. Now, gently pushing upward. And sometimes, maybe there's a bad year and nothing grows for a little bit in the trunk. Leave an opening. It really makes these trees look real. I lived in Alaska for many, many years. And old trees there, boy, if, you, if you're a tree living in Alaska, you had a rough life. Here's one right here, whatever. See, put in a trunk. Here we can come right along and give him some little arms. Tree needs little arms. This is where the little bird sits. I have to have a place for the birds. You know me and my birds. I showed you the one that I raised and let go. I showed you one of them this year. There. Okay, I see already you have all that blocked in. There we go. Maybe, tell you what, let's, let's do another little tree right there. Just the top. Now then, I'll just take the same brush and I'll go right into some yellow ochre. Just leave that color right on it and go right into yellow ochre and just back and forth. And we can come right back in here and let's put a little bit of highlight. Don't want to kill all that dark. All we want is a little bit of highlight. See, and you can make those limbs stand out. Create little individuals. That easy. Look at that. And this is where you separate them. Just, just highlight. And once again, it's very easy to overdo this. <laughs> it gets to working well. You just want to cover up the whole thing. I do that all the time. Just overkill. Okay, keep these trees quite dark. I don't want to leave this one out over here. If I don't put some color on him, he'll be upset with me. And I don't want this tree to be mad at me. Now maybe, maybe, I'll wash this brush, just wipe it on a paper towel there. I'm going to take, this is just yellow ochre, and we'll take a little touch of the, little touch of the cad yellow, 
just mix it together. And let's begin working on some little individual bushes here. Now all I'm going to do is take the corner of the fan brush and give it a little upward push. Okay, you can create all kinds of little bushes just with a fan brush. Just with a fan brush. See there? One at a time though. Super, super way to make all kinds of happy little things. There they go. See, bush after bush after bush. But work in layers. That's most, most important. Work in layers. Tell you what, let's do. Let's put some snow in the front of that. Okay, maybe, maybe there's a snow bank comes right out here. See there? Grab some of that dark, because that, that ends up being your shadows in there. Really, really makes it nice. And maybe there's a little projection, just wherever you want it. You make the decision. Look at that. See, that easy, that easy. Let's get crazy. What the heck? Maybe this comes. Yeah. Make a decision and go with it. See? Right there. And you change the whole lay of the land in just a heartbeat. Because this is your world, and you can do anything that you want to do here. And bring some of this ochre down into the snow to break up those harsh edges. See there? And maybe there's some little things that grow out here in the snow. Maybe right out here on the edge, wherever you want them. Sort of just make a decision, drop them in. There. Let's go over to the other side. Put some snow in there. Maybe this one comes. Yep. Right on down. Like so. Should they could almost come together if you want them to. What the heck? There. Bring them back up in there. So I want to pick up some of this darker color and bring it out. Bring it out. Like so. But look at, look at what you've created. Just in a few minutes, with just angles. Just angles. Okay. There we go. Now then, we can take our liquid white, get a little more on the knife here, and we can come back in here and just add a little water line. I'll show you something that's even is, that you might like to try. Watch this, watch this. So many things I want to show you, I get carried away here. Take a little of the brown, and if you want to show a little ledge under here, just take a little brown and scrub it. See. And it'll create the illusion that there's a little ledge under there, and it's a good way to clean up the bottom. See there? Look at all that. Wherever you want it to be. And you can bring some of it right on up into the snow here, and then take your other brush and work it out. That'll turn out to be nice shadows. There we go. Like that. And then put our water lines under there. Okay, and we'll put a few little bushes over here, just using the yellow ochre and the fan brush. Bring them right on down, wherever you think they should live. That's exactly where they were to be. Okay, let's get crazy. You know me, I'm a tree fanatic. Let's put a happy tree that lives. Oh, right over my other trees. Right there. We'll give him a friend. Right there. Tell you what, don't want this side left out. We'll put one right there. These trees help push everything back. They really, really make the painting more interesting. It also, it also drives my director crazy when I do this and there's only a minute left. So, just take the knife, put a little highlight here and there. Right up the side. 
There we go. See, a little bit on this one. Right on up. And we can take our liner brush, thin the paint down. This was just paint thinner on the liner brush. And we come back in here and we put in the indication here and there of some happy little limbs. Just however many you want. How many? If you have trouble making this paint flow off your brush, add a little more of the paint thinner to it. You need a thin paint for this to work. Thick paint will not flow. Get this tree here some. Like that. And the little tree on the other side. He, he don't want to be left out. We'll give him an arm or two. There we go. See, wherever you want them. And as many or as few. Just whatever. Now then, watch here, watch here. Take a little bit of the liquid white right into the titanium white. And let's go right up in here. And all you do is just touch. And let's just pop in a few happy little, little, little white highlights here and there. See there? And you put these in just wherever you want them. And they really look, look like little things of snow laying up here in your tree. We'll put a few over in this tree. And with that, I think we have just about a completed painting. I really hope you've enjoyed this one. The liquid clear will open whole new avenues for you. Until next time, happy painting and God bless.